I've been enthralled with the lynx since I was a little boy, learning about them in a wildlife sticker book I got from my parents. They were one of the coolest looking cats I'd ever seen to that point, which they remain to this day for me. Of the four species of lynx, the Eurasian variant is the largest of all. This wide-ranging carnivore is Europe's third largest predator after the brown bear and the gray wolf. With the ability to spot a mouse up to 75 meters away, getting close to them as a full-size man is more than just a small challenge. It can seem as difficult as sneaking up on a ghost. Also on their side is how they thrive in this habitat. The brutal taiga is perfect for them, although it presents many challenges for a hunter. Exacerbating the search is the fact that the Eurasian lynx is mainly nocturnal or crepuscular, so mostly active during dawn and dusk. Temperatures in the taiga get even more punishing in the absence of the sun. This is a solitary trip, a kind of hunter's vision quest for me. I'm not actually counting on harvesting a lynx, though I hope to. Seeing one in the wild for the first time will already be a thrill. Using best practices and with the data provided by Rare Gem Outfitters, I expect to do some stalking near dusk and some stand hunting when darkness falls with the help of the night vision optics they've provided me on this trip. Hopefully, I'll get to harvest one of these cats mythology refers to it as a keeper of secrets. Making my way into the cabin, I'm thankful for this relatively mild day for the taiga substantially less blustery than it can be, the wind chill won't be quite as punishing as it might have been making this hunt that little bit more enjoyable. All the same, my plan is to get warmed through by the wood stove for a while over a late lunch, then head back out in the late afternoon to begin the stock. First though, I'll do one last check of my equipment and make sure everything's in good working order. With my belly full and my body warmed through, I'm heading out to an area beyond one of the farthest reaching lookout towers on the reserve. A generous hike northwest of it is considered a lynx hot spot of sorts and Rare Gem has provided me the GPS coordinates for a tree stand they've got there, which has been fruitful for several previous clients. I have some time before sunset, so I plan to do some methodic spot and stock on my way to the stand. I may well have some luck before even getting there if I'm quiet and careful in my movement. Though the sights and sounds are beautiful on camera, the snow flurry that started simply places the lead in this dance on the side of the lynx, and the resulting wind chill at this elevation begins to make me feel like I have two left feet on this hunt. The flurry begins to subside, and the song of the wind is replaced by a silence so eerie as to cause even the tree branches to become rigid and tacit, only adding to the tension I'm feeling from finding no signs of any animal at all. The mating grunt from a reindeer somewhere in the forest to the west is my only assurance so far that I'm not completely alone.
Nearing the edge of the massive frozen lake that lies at the north edge of the reserve, I find the tree stand, and with a generous several minutes of sunlight left so as to quietly make my way into it. Hopefully, without disturbing any feline specters that may already sense that I'm here, even though I've seen and heard nothing whatsoever of them. Though in some regions of the world, dusk can become a cacophony of wildlife orchestrations, here in this part of the taiga the air is filled only with the echoes of my own calls, and I become very aware of the deafening sound of my own heartbeat in my ears, which, with the complete deadening of the wind now, becomes the only other thing that I can hear. As the sun sinks into the endless sea of silence, I change out my equipment to make use of the night vision optics I've been provided. Hopefully, in the absence of auditory clues, I can at least spot one of these fur-laden phantoms moving nearby. Finally, well out on the ice sheet, I spot a solitary cat, much too far out to shoot, but it goes a long way in assuring me that a successful harvest may still be possible. Given the hours I've invested in this sit, I decide it's time to quietly move out of the stand and make some kind of play for the only animal of any kind that I've seen since arriving on the reserve. As I approach the frozen shore, I spot a second lynx, suddenly doubling my chances of a successful harvest on a hunt whose chances seemed so dismal just a short couple of hours before. Given that I can see open water in the distance, and that this area isn't even close to my regular stomping grounds, I'm reluctant to venture too far out onto the ice. Instead, I tuck into the bushes at the shore and decide to try calling them in. If the effort fails, I'll still end up going home with the thrill of having spotted them in the wild. It takes every bit of discipline that I have not to overcall, and it takes a great deal of time to pique their interest, but they do start vaguely moving toward me, not at all in a straight line, and certainly not all at once. As invested as I've become in this hunt, I'm careful to keep my wits and wait for the very moment that she freezes completely still. The second cat bolts right by and I'm struck by the juxtaposition of its graceful gait against the backdrop of this brutal place.
the culmination of a lifetime of wildlife fascination wrapped up in this beautiful furry package. I'm elated to make this bucket list harvest a reality. The adrenaline having made my extremities even colder than they already were, I'm pleased to be on my way back to the cabin to get some warmth and rest. A hunt that I've anticipated for so long now concluded, I can't help but feel conflicted. At once I'm pleased with the harvest, yet sorrowful for the beast whose time on earth is over. Rarely has a hunt affected me this much, and I'm sure to spend many hours reflecting on this experience.